Hi y'all, my name is Whitney and we're gonna do a foundational level data interpretation question today. Now, if you haven't encountered data interpretation on the GRE, it typically is that you'll be given one or two graphs and then you'll be asked a set of two to four questions about those graphs. Now for this, we're just gonna do a single graph and a single question to practice. So take a few moments to try it on your own and then we'll work on it together. So for any data interpretation problem, the first thing you want to do is spend a few moments familiarizing yourself with the graphs. In this case, we've been given a pie chart that tells us about April sales for produce stand P and the variety of fruits and vegetables that are sold there. Um, I like to take a moment just to like pick a specific data point, read it back to myself, and make sure that I understand what it means. So in this case, you know, the fact that apples um, are 19% means that whatever the total sales are at this produce stand, to find apples, I would just take 19% of that number. Cool, so I feel like I understand the graph. Now it comes time to work on the problem itself. Um, with data interpretation, problems can be multiple choice, so standard five answer choices. It could also be choose all that apply or numeric entry, where you plug in your own number into a box. So because this is multiple choice, and for all multiple choice problems, I go to the answer choices first, just to see if they offer any clues. And typically what I'm looking for is to see how spread apart they are to let me know if I'm allowed to estimate. And in general for data interpretation, eyeballing and estimating should be your first move to see if like that's a possibility. So looks like we can, these answer choices are really spread out. So now we'll move to the question itself. So we're told that the total sales in April were $4,367, which is a lot of money for tomatoes and apples. <laughs> but okay, so total sales are 4,367, kind of an ugly number. Um, then approximately what amount of those sales came from three specific items, lettuce, potatoes, and tomatoes. Now, even if they hadn't said the word approximately, the answer choices were leading me to this like estimation, but the combination of approximately with a really ugly number is like screaming estimate. So let's take a look at our graph. We're supposed to be looking for lettuce, potatoes, tomatoes. So kind of get that in your mind. Now, it's really nice in a pie chart when we've got the pie wedges close to one another, because instead of having to sit there and compute, you know, 13% for tomatoes, 22% for potatoes, lettuce 9%, we can maybe think about lumping them all together and doing just the one computation, if we're gonna do a computation at all. Now, these three together are almost a half. In fact, if they just included carrots, it looks like it'd be pretty precisely a half. So taking this 4,367, let's round it a bit. We'll take it up to about 4,400. Half of that I can do without a calculator. That's 2,200. I know that the three pieces that I care about are a little less than that. So I can now eliminate any answer choices that are a half or greater. So anything from 2,200 and up. And so there go three of my answer choices. And that's not uncommon. So always a good idea to try to do some estimation and then look at your answer choices. So next I'm left with $2 amounts below half. And there might be a temptation to raise for the calculator and start to compute here. But let's take a moment and step back and just think with a little, you know, like our day-to-day -day logic. We're only 6% off from a half. So we really are quite close. And 1,200 is pretty far away. Um, it's a much smaller fraction of our total. And so it seems that answer choice A is pretty far out of bounds. And that's going to leave us with the only answer choice that makes sense, which is B. So when you're working on data interpretation with your studies going forward, I just really want to encourage you to take a moment to see if estimation and eyeballing can be applied before you ever get bogged down in computation. Subscribe for more GRE Math Spotlight videos by Manhattan Prep. And then leave us a comment to tell us how you solved this problem. Happy studying!